Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Dana Andrews in Fulton and Will Ausler's Father Flanagan of Boys Town on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present Fulton and Will Owsler's memorable story, Father Flanagan of Boystown. It's the story of a great man, of his faith and love of mankind, of his unswerving belief that there's no such thing as a bad boy, and of his dream that any boy can become a credit to himself and to the community if given understanding, security, and love. But this dream of Father Flanagan was not only a dream. In the boys' town that he founded, it became a reality and an example. And I can think of no true story more fitting to be told by us at the new year, for it was Father Flanagan who, in truth, gave so many happy new years to so many thousands of boys. For the part of Father Flanagan, we are privileged to have with us tonight that talented and popular actor, Dana Andrews. And now a word about Hallmark Cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of Father Flanagan of Boys Town. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse. Presenting Fulton and Will Ausler's Father Flanagan of Boys Town. Starring Dana Andrews. From the time Edward Joseph Flanagan was a very young lad in Ireland, all his energies were concentrated on becoming a priest. Frail and sickly as he grew older, it seemed impossible he would ever achieve his dream but his faith never wavered. In the winter of 1917, in Omaha, Nebraska, with several years of priesthood behind him, Father Flanagan learned the reason for his being, his existence. Bishop Hardy, I want your permission to open a home to care for the homeless, unwanted, and misdirected boys. That's very noble, Father Flanagan, but there is no money to spare for new ventures. I'm well aware of that, sir. But what I propose to do is to open a home and take care of these boys on my own. But how is that possible, Father? You have no wealth. You live only on the slight income of a parish priest. I'm not afraid. I'm certain that the dear Lord will see me through whatever difficulties I might face. But what do you know about the care of youngsters? I come from a big family, and I know how it goes. How each must do his part. The kind of home I grew up in is the kind these boys ought to have. And my home will be open to boys of every color, race, or creed. And they'll have love and understanding. It's difficult to deny a faith such as yours, Father Flanagan. I wish there was more I could offer. But all I can give you is my blessing. Proceed, Mr. District Attorney. Your Honor, I demand that these seven defendants, all young hardened gangsters, be adjudged guilty and sent to a reformatory where they can do no further damage. Your Honor. Is there something you want to say about this case, Father Flanagan? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. A reformatory is the answer for these homeless boys. Boys sleeping in alleyways, riding freight cars. Boys without food or proper care. I say by placing them behind prison walls with hardened criminals, you destroy their entire future. Give them instead understanding, thoughtfulness, and a respect for themselves. That's how we will save them from future crime. And to save children from crime is to end crime. 
If we do not save our children from crime, we shall lose our civilization. That is the final and greatest challenge of this problem. I beg of you, Your Honor, parole them to my care. Granted, Father Flanagan. And good luck. Thank you, Your Honor. Court adjourned. Come on, fellas. Let's go. Boy, was I scared of that, George. The way them prune faces... Hey, boys, now let's cut out any more talk about the morning's prune faces. We're forgetting all unpleasantness. How can we forget? We gotta come and report regularly, ain't we? You'll make your reports to me, Bob. Father, what are you gonna do with me? Well, I don't know yet, Tommy. But I'll bet you'd make a pretty good first baseman. What's playing baseball got to do with it? There ain't no punishment, Father. There'll be no punishment. I'll try to get that straight. Realize what I'm saying to you. You're beginning again. Well, I don't know about the rest of these guys, but I'm taking it on the lamp. No, Bob. I want you to come to my home. It's a place I've started for boys like you. And you think you can hold us there? You know, we ain't no angels. There are no high walls around the house and no locks on the doors. It's your home and my home. You don't wall in members of your own family. Father Flanagan, there's a Mrs. Merle and her son waiting in your office to see you. No, thank you, sister. Our home is certainly getting popular. We have 12 boys now. I'll be right. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Merle. Oh, Father, I had to come here. I, I need help. Well, that's a mighty fine-looking lad you have. How old are you, son? Eight. <laughs> Pretty big for your age. What's your name? Jimmy. Oh, Father, I beg of you. I, I can't take care of them. My husband's left me. I... I can't work and take care of him. Oh, you got to give him a chance, Father. Jimmy's a, a good boy. Of course he is. Oh, here's some, some chocolate, son. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Will you take him, Father? Let him live here. Jimmy and I are going to be close friends. Oh, thank the good Lord. Jimmy. Jimmy, darling, it, it won't be for long, I promise you. I'll come. I'll come every day, I promise you. I... <laughs> Goodbye, Jimmy. Mommy! You're going to be all right, Jimmy. Now, stand up and let's have a look at you. I'm sorry, Father. I, I can't. I have no braces for my feet. Dear God. Well, we'll work it out, Jim. You'll have a fine time here. One of the bigger boys will carry you up to your room where you'll stay with the other fellows. Would you like that, Jimmy? Yes, Father. Oh, well, Bob. Yes, Father Flanagan? This is Jimmy. He's going to stay with us. Would you carry him upstairs, please? Be careful now, he's heavy. He ain't heavy, Father. He's my brother. Flanagan coming. Oh, this is Christmas. He'll be here any minute. I bet you he's out scouting stuff for us. Maybe he's going to give me a new catcher's mitt. Oh, 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 hey, hey pipe down, you guys. What do you expect, any old apartment store? Hey, I see him. Father Flanagan. He's almost to the door. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Father. Hello, boys. Got anything outside you want us to help you carry in, Father? No. No, Tommy. Well, I have a couple of things with me. What are they? Well, there's, there's this and this. Oh, and I'm afraid that's all, boys. Oh, well, I'll be. Only this broken down kid's truck and a bag of marbles. Some Christmas. Better keep your big flap shut, Tommy. It's swell, Father. No, it isn't, Bob. It isn't at all. And boys, I'd hoped with all my heart that our first Christmas together could have been merrier. I would have liked each of you to have a gift. But it seems most folks are having a hard time right now. And Not even a Christmas it, tree. What in your lip, Robert? It's you? all right, Bob. The boys have a right to be disappointed. No, they haven't. Not after all you've done for us. Father, could I have a word with you? Oh, of course, sister. Uh, you'll excuse me, boys. Father, I didn't get a chance to tell you before, but we're out of food. There'll be no Christmas dinner. Dear God. What shall I do? I'll be back in a little while, sister. There must be a friend somewhere who'll help feed 25 hungry children. Yeah, come on. I wish 
there was something more than sauerkraut, boys. But there isn't. So we'll be grateful for what we have. May Almighty God look down mercifully this day on, and every day on all homeless wanderers. Amen. Well, I let you down, didn't I, fellas? Let us down? Father, could I have a double portion? Oh, me too. Put on my plate up, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Do you mean that, fellas? Mean it? Who said something about turkey being good? What do you say, fellas? Oh, it's great. 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 It's great. It's good enough to sing about, huh? Sister, are you ready? Yes, Pop. Then what are we waiting for, boys? And one, two... I heard the bells on Christmas Day Carols from in your barrels light And when as we the words repeat All peace on earth could fill And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes Nor mourning, nor crying, nor sorrow shall be any more Dear God, we're very job will be done. Things are all right. We'll come through with flying colors, the boys, and our home. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Father Flanagan of Boys Town, starring Dana Andrews. As the clock strikes 12 next Saturday night, and many of you are singing, Should Old Acquaintance Be Forgot, there's a way you can give those words real meaning. By making a New Year's resolution to remember your friends and dear ones all through the coming year, on birthdays, anniversaries, every special occasion that is important to them. And the handy way to keep this New Year's resolution is to have a hallmark date book. Yours for the asking, from the friendly store where you find Hallmark cards. You'll like this little date book with its colorful blue forget-me-not cover. And its convenient size is just right for your purse, pocket, or telephone table. You'll find it helpful in so many ways. For it not only provides a calendar for each month, but tells you the appropriate birthstone and flower. List wedding anniversaries from the 1st to the 75th, telling which is the leather, lace, or crystal anniversary, among others with ample space for the names and addresses of folks you want to remember. And particularly important right now, it has a space for your next year's Christmas card list, something you will want to make now while this year's cards are fresh in mind. Ask for your Hallmark date book tomorrow. It's yours from the fine store where you buy your Hallmark greeting cards. And now back to James Hilton and the second act of Father Flanagan of Boys Town, starring Dana Andrews. <laughs> That winter of 1917 continued to be an ordeal for Father Flanagan, a time of trial and skimping, with tomorrow's needs and the next month's rent always looming like dark shadows just ahead. His critics in Omaha were demanding to know what good this penny-poor priest could hope to accomplish. How could he help wayward youth in an overcrowded hodgepodge like this home, where often they had hardly enough bread to put on the table? But still the boys kept coming, and Father Flanagan kept giving them hope. Well, I'm glad you're visiting our home, Your Honor. Brother Flanagan, I have a favor to ask. I'm fully aware that you're now housing over 50 boys, that your capacity is taxed to the limit. But there's another boy I'd like you to take. Where is he now? In your ante room. Ed is barely 14 years old, Father, but already he's a desperate character. He's robbed a bank and held up three stores with a revolver. Mm. What's his background? Eddie was born in a slum near the docks. Lost his mother and father in a flu epidemic before he was four. He was shunted from one family to another, like a hungry and desperate animal. Oh, won't you have him come in? Thank you, Father. Good morning, Eddie. I'm in no hurry. Uh, don't mind his smoking, Father. I, I was lucky to get him here at all. I'll, uh, I'll leave you two alone. Eddie, you're welcome here. This whole place is run by boys, you know. Boy mayor, boy council, boy police chief. Where's the jail? Oh, we haven't a jail. 
You're going to take a bath and then get supper. Tomorrow you start in our school. You and I can become real friends, Eddie. That's strictly up to you. We're all one big family here. The boys are my sons, and I'm their father. Skip the baloney, holy Joe. I don't need no old man, especially a preaching one like you. Eddie, you like baseball? It's for Sister Mary's kid stuff. You don't think Babe Ruth is Sister Mary, do you? How many times I have to tell you I ain't interested? Eddie, you're not fooling me. At heart, you're a good boy and you'll prove it. You make me laugh. Got a spare cigarette on you? You don't scare me either, Eddie. I don't give up so easily. Bishop Hardy, I've found the ideal place to build a home for my boys. Build a home, Father Flanagan? Ever since the day I first walked into our rented building, I've dreamt and prayed that someday we'd have a home we could call our own. Well, Bishop, I've found that place. It's called Overlook Farm. I rather think I'd like to call it Boys Town. I know that property, Father. And while I don't want to dishearten you, I must point out it will cost many thousands of dollars. Where will you get the money? Oh, we'll get the money. Our gifts come in slowly but steadily. People who know about our work contribute, and that's real wealth. If we can have time... Who would give you time? I know the man who owns the property. His name is David Baum. He is a good and warm-hearted man, but he is also a man of sound business judgment. a good priest, Father, but I'm a good businessman. If you should fail to collect money, no one would blame you. But uh, I have responsibilities to my associates, and I must think of them and what they might suffer from a heavy loss. But these boys are a good investment, Mr. Baum. They will grow, because of what we can give them, into good Americans. That's a gamble. A business gamble you want me to make on an experiment. The crop of bad boys. Bad boys. Mr. Baum, there are no bad boys. How can they be bad boys? They're just children. Well, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Baum. I speak in this way because I know what wonderful boys they are. I realize I have very few assets. I can see, Father Flanagan, your greatest asset is your faith. You can have the land. Don't worry about the payment. We'll arrange for that in the future. I'm willing to gamble on your faith that there are no bad boys. Father Flanagan, Eddie's been with us for six months now. He swears constantly. And today in the classroom, he threw an inkwell right at the blackboard. Oh, please, Father, if not for yourself, then for the sake of your other boys, let him go. Why don't you leave me alone? Why do you keep bothering me? Just a minute, Eddie. I guess this is my fault. I mean about your throwing inkwells. I never told you that you mustn't throw them. You're a good boy. Now, ah, relax. You've been trying to get around me for a long time. But I'm wise to you. If you was on the level, I might have been a sucker at that. <laughs> I almost fell for your line. But last night, I got to thinking it over. And I see the joker in the whole thing. Mr. Flanagan, you're a phony. You'd better prove that, Eddie, or shut up. Okay. I just kicked the sister in the shin. Well, what do you say now? I still say you're a good boy. What did I tell you? You keep on saying that, lying. You know it's a lie. It can't be true. Don't that prove you're a phony? Eddie, you're smart enough to know when a thing is really proved. What is a good boy? A good boy is an obedient boy, right? Yeah. Does what his teachers tell him to do. On the nose. Well, that's all you've ever done, Eddie. The only trouble with you is that you had the wrong teachers. Wharf tufts and corner bums. But you certainly obeyed them. You've done every last wrong and rotten thing they taught you to do. If you could only obey the right teachers here, in the same way, you'd be fine. Well, I'm tired of this joint. I'm going to blow out of here. You're going to stop me? Eddie, I got a secret to tell you. You're the first one to hear it. Saturday night at the high school auditorium campaign, a campaign is being started to raise money for the first building in Boys Town. Will you be backstage to help me launch it? I can use your support, boy. 
I'll do what I please when I please. See you around sometime. <laughs> Father, gee, imagine speaking to all those people out there. I'm not nervous, Bob. I'm just plain sad. Sad? Well, you should be excited and happy. I know that, son, but... Well, in this moment of triumph, when the goal is about to be achieved, I feel I've lost the victory. Why, Father? Because I've lost my first boy since we opened our doors. Eddie's packed and left us. That's good riddance. That's not the way to feel, Bob. I'm sorry, Father. Do you want me to go and find him? No. I wouldn't want to bring him back that way. I only want him if he cares to return by himself and of his own volition. Well, they're waiting for me. Good luck, Father. Thank you. Thank you. My cup runneth over. I've never been so proud as I am at this moment to be on the same stage with the three men who truly represent American democracy and the brotherhood of man. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. J.D. Davidson is a Protestant. Mr. Francis Matthews is a Catholic. And Mr. Henry Monsky, a Jew. United, these leaders are making Boys Town a reality instead of a dream. I come to you as a salesman to beg you to help me for I have something to sell. The love of a homeless waif is for sale, and it is my business to sell it to you. Three boys a day are turned away from our home because we have no room for them. Many a time I've seen a boy carrying his grip, his head bent low, beginning his journey back to where? He has no home. He has no friends. His home has to be the streets and alleys and unclean hovels where criminals are made. There are two things in life greater than money, and they are faith in God and love toward your fellow man. You might have millions, but if you do not have these things, your life has been lived for naught. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing backstage here? Where is he? I thought you'd run out on Father Flanagan, Eddie. What's it to you, wise guy? I ought to beat some brains into your head. Then maybe you'd have sense enough to respect the greatest guy you'll ever know in your life. Ah, dry up. Wait a minute. Hold it, boys. Eddie. I... I ain't left town yet. I thought I owed you something. You don't owe me a thing, son. Well, I... Thought I'd come here and say goodbye. Eddie, only a good boy would think of doing that. Why don't we sit down? Nah... Now, I ain't got the time. I've got to catch a freight. Now, why don't you wait for the next one? It's cold out. Maybe we could get a sandwich together or something. I ain't hungry. I'm all filled up. Oh, I'm sure of that. Come on. We'll take a walk. Father. Don't say anything. Let's just walk. Yeah. Father, Father Flanagan, I, I got to talk to you. I've been a wise guy. I, I thought I knew all the answers. Father, I, I ain't such a tough guy. I if you'll let me, if you'll give me another chance. Oh, Father. <laughs> You're in, Eddie. You're with us to stay. To love and be loved. You've got a home again, and a father. The lives of all great magnanimous people fill our hearts with deep admiration and warm gratitude. We offer thanks to Almighty God for having given us Father Edward Joseph Flanagan. He loved and served beyond the barricades of faith and race. Father Flanagan of Boys Town has gone to his coronation. The world is poorer, but in another sense the world is richer than it was before he entered it. 
for he will live on in the hearts and minds of Americans in ages yet to come. The crypt in which his body lies bears the legend engraved in gold. Father Flanagan, founder of Boys Town, lover of Christ and man. Hilton will return in a moment. There's a New Year's gift waiting for you at the store where you buy Hallmark cards. It's your Hallmark date book, your handy record of all the important occasions and doings you'll want to remember next year. Whether you carry this little forget-me-not book in your purse or pocket to keep it beside your telephone, you'll soon discover how useful it can be. For instance, it gives the birthstones and flowers for every birthday you write down, gives the names of wedding anniversaries appropriate to each year. You'll find plenty of space for reminding yourself about household duties, social dates, and very important right now, it has a space for your next year's Christmas card list, something you will want to make now while this year's cards are fresh in mind. Yes, like the friendly store where you buy all your Hallmark cards, your Hallmark date book serves you faithfully all year round. Ask for your Hallmark date book tomorrow. It's yours from the fine store where you buy your Hallmark cards. Here again is James Hilton. Peter Andrews, you've made us all feel very humble tonight by bringing to life again Father Flanagan, whose good deeds will never be forgotten. Well, I enjoyed returning to the Hallmark Playhouse. I, I think it's a grand way to bring 1949 to a close. Being a part of a program which brings goodwill to so many all year round with their fine radio show and their Hallmark greeting cards. Well, Dana, we're certainly glad you feel that way, and in the year ahead, we hope you'll remember your friends on their anniversaries, birthday, and other special occasions with our fine selection of Hallmark cards for every occasion. You can certainly count on me for that, Frank, and thanks again, Mr. Hilton, for inviting me over tonight. I'm sure you'll be interested, Dana, in a message we've received from Boystown, Nebraska. Frank, would you please read it for us? Certainly will, Mr. Hilton. It's from the Reverend Monsignor Wegner, the head of Boys Town since Father Flanagan's death in 1948. And it says, For the more than 7,000 boys who since 1917 have benefited from Father Flanagan's program, I wish to extend New Year's greetings and thanks to the American people whose generosity has made Father Flanagan's home possible. And to Hallmark Playhouse for helping to commemorate his memory tonight. I can only say I'm happy to have been part of your presentation of the story of Father Flanagan. Now, uh, what's the story for next week, Miss Hilton? Next week? But before I tell you about that, thanks again, Dana, for being with us. And since this is our last program before the new year, 1950, on behalf of all of us here and the makers of Hallmark greeting cards, may I extend our best New Year's greetings. I hope you'll all plan to spend your first Thursday of 1950 with us when we have that delightful Hollywood actress, Claudette Colbert, appearing in The Egg and I by Betty MacDonald. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you carry enough to send the very best. Dana Andrews appears to the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn and can currently be seen co-starring with Susan Hayward in the Goldwyn production, My Foolish Heart. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Claudette Colbert in Betty McDonald's The Egg and I. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.